Hey everyone, April Dunham here. Microsoft Ignite 2020 was this week, so I wanted to do a short video and highlight some of the key Power Platform, SharePoint, and Teams related announcements. But first, here's the intro. Thinking back on what I watched as far as the Power Platform related announcements at Ignite, I think I could summarize that by saying developers, 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 and teams, teams, teams. So diving into what I mean by the developers comment, a lot of the Power Platform related announcements were focused on how you can extend the platform from a pro dev standpoint. And this is honestly one of the things that I think makes the Power Platform stand out from some of the competitors out there is that no cliffs experience where citizen devs can come in and build robust applications, but they can be extended and made even better with professional developer skill sets. There were a few key sessions, one that Charles Lamana did and another that Julie Strauss did that really dove into some of these new developer functionalities with the Power Platform. And there's a corresponding blog post that you're seeing here, which I'll put a link to in the video notes, that kind of walks through some of these features and functionality in detail. One of the big ones here was the ability for developers to create Azure functions and utilize Azure API management and be able to consume those within your Power Apps at no additional cost if you're using the Power Apps within Microsoft Teams. So there's actually going to be an Azure connector that you can utilize and pull in data from Azure API management or Azure functions into your Power Apps. And this was something that before this would have cost you additional Power Apps licensing because you would have had to have went the custom connector route, which is premium functionality to do. So being able to utilize this for free within a Power Apps Teams-based app is huge. And you'll see in this blog, they have a screenshot of what this Azure API functionality is going to look like. So it's going to show up from the citizen dev standpoint, building the Power App as a normal connector that they would use. And they can leverage and pull information from that at no additional cost. And right now they're saying this should be available in October. So hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to get our hands on this. The other announcement was deep integration with GitHub. There's going to be GitHub Actions so that you can truly automate your Power Apps deployments and manage the life cycle. In another one, uh, Power Virtual Agents and Azure Bot Framework are now fully connected. So that's going to allow pro devs and citizen devs to create bots together. So this is just a really high level overview of some of the key announcements. If you want to learn more, definitely go check out Charles and Julie's sessions, which I'll put a link to in the video notes so that you can get the full details and scoop on that. Now for my Teams, Teams, Teams comment earlier, the big announcement on this front for Power Platform and Teams is Project Oatdell is now in public preview. Hopefully you caught my video about a month ago now where I did a 10 minute overview of what Project Oakdale is. If you didn't, I'll put a link to that in the video notes as well. There are several great sessions at Ignite about this functionality and I really feel this is going to be a game changer. I know a lot of the Power Apps that I built, I was already embedding them inside Microsoft Teams because that's where most people live for their jobs these days. But if you didn't want to pay a premium, you were usually building those Power Apps applications on SharePoint. And you know that I love SharePoint, but SharePoint isn't a relational database. So for those large scale enterprise level applications, it might not be the best solution. So something like the Common Data Service would be a better fit since it is a relational database. Now with Project Oakdale, we're going to be able to have those relational database functionality and capability of the Common Data Service for building Teams-based Power Apps for free included within your Teams licensing. So if you go out to your Office 365 tenant now, and if you have Teams licensing, you should be able to see this functionality. So what you want to do is open Teams. And if you don't have it installed already, you'll want to make sure to add in the Power Apps app for Microsoft Teams. So click the three dots on the left rail and do a search for Power Apps. So select the Power Apps option there. You'll see an option, a pop-up window to add this into your Teams environment. I've obviously already did that, which is why I didn't get that message. But this is what it's going to look like. It's a embedded inline 
fully functional Power Apps editor within Microsoft Teams. When you get this installed, you'll see the message on the front about how to build Teams-based Power Apps. There's a few templates built in to get started to kind of learn what these Teams-based Power Apps are like. They offer a employee ideas template, inspection, and issue reporting. So to use that, you could just select the template and add that to a team. So these feel and function just like regular Teams applications. So what it's going to ask you to do is what team do you want to use this app in? So you can just use your search, select the team from the list, and select Setup tab. So that will add this Power Apps template as a tab into the channel that you selected. You'll click Save. It's going to go through an install process for the application. And that's the really cool thing about Project Oakdale is you can package up your Power Apps and deploy them into the Teams App Store. So that allows you to easily and instantly share your applications and deploy those at scale. So once the template is installed, you'll see a screen here giving you a welcome message. And it's going to ask you to select the channel where messages should be posted since this particular template posts messages. So you can just select that from the drop down and click Let's Go. And you see this really looks like a native Teams application. We have the ability to create a campaign. Do so you have a form input? You can select an image give some instructions. It's a pretty cool looking app and this is all built within Power Apps. I'm not going to go into a super deep dive on this right now because I wanted to stick to an overview of Ignite announcements, but of course I'll be making more videos on this Project Oakdale functionality. And if you want to check out some right now, I know Shane Young just released three separate videos on this um, yesterday. So you can check that out in the meantime while I'm working on some content to put out for this. So more on the Power Platform Teams integration, there's some announcements of a more integrated Power Automate app and Power BI application for Teams also. And something that I think was added pretty recently, I didn't notice it being announced at Ignite, but when I was poking around in my Power App today, I noticed there's a new Create Teams Meeting action in the Teams connector for Power Apps, so that's pretty cool too. But those are the main highlights I wanted to cover for Power Platform. If you want to learn more, they do release a book of news every year for Ignite. So I'll put a link to that. And that's what you're seeing here on the screen. That kind of covers all of the main features and functionality that were discussed in Ignite. I want to move on and talk a little bit about some Microsoft Teams features that were announced. One is the ability to have a custom layout. This is going to allow you to customize how meeting content shows up when you're in a Teams meeting. So with this, for example, you could choose to show the screen if you're sharing your screen and the presenter's video feed side by side or something like that in the meeting. And you can choose to configure that custom layout. Of course, more coming with that together mode that was announced earlier and different together mode templates that you can use. And a big one for me is this breakout room functionality. I'm really looking forward to this because it's going to allow you to start in one Teams meeting, but then break out into smaller different meetings from that. This is really good to help break off and facilitate some smaller, more intimate brainstorming sessions with your team. There's also the Teams Home Site app that's coming. That's pretty cool. It's essentially giving employees and those frontline workers, for example, a gateway into your SharePoint intranet directly within Teams. And if you do a lot of meeting recordings in Teams using Stream, you'll appreciate some of the new functionality coming there to be able to easily share out those stream meeting recordings to external and anonymous users. On the SharePoint side of things, there were some interesting announcements when it comes to Project Cortex. So they've announced their first product from that called SharePoint Syntax. The way I kind of understood it, it seems like they're taking kind of some of like the AI builder functionality that we have right now in Power Platform and allowing you to leverage that within SharePoint documents. So essentially, it's going to enable you to take documents in a SharePoint library and train an AI model to be able to read and extract information from them. So that way, you can automatically process that and apply metadata for you. So those were the main things that I wanted to share with you all, just to give you a high-level summary of some of the key Power Platform team SharePoint-related announcements. I'll post a link to this book of news so that you can read it and see all the announcements that were made. I'm interested to hear what you're most excited about that was announced at Ignite. So drop a note in the comments and let me know what you're most excited about from the Ignite announcements. I can't wait to make more videos on some of this new functionality. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.